So my compliments to Sahitya and Wilson, both of them. I think they deserve a very good one. Father is here and Sahitya's mother is here. You can well imagine how much sacrifice they must have done and how much trust they have on their children so that they stood by them under all circumstances. They educated them, they brought them up. They brought them to this particular level. So I think more than the two, I think their parents need to be complimented even more. Okay, now I will ask you a question for which I want an answer. How many of you want to be like Sahitya or Wilson? Please raise your hands. I like it. Now can I ask you, why do you want to be like them? Can anybody, the one who have raised their hand, can anybody say as to why you would want to be like them? I want to hear from you, please. For an intensity of feeling, how many of you who have raised their hands just now have that burning desire to become higher officers? Okay, now I am asking this question once again. How many of you want to become IS officers? Okay, now the numbers of hands have come up. Have you noticed that? Initially when you raised the hands, that was just a wish. From the wish, for it to become a desire, a burning desire, the numbers come up. From the burning desire, the effort begins. And first attempt, second attempt, third attempt, it is like a Herculean task to clear. And somewhere down the line, people will fall by the wayside. They are not, they do not have enough energy or perseverance or persistence to keep fighting for what you want. This is something which I have observed. The odds are heavily stacked against you, not just you, anybody who wants to take this examination. You know how many people take this examination preliminary? Any white guesses? Can't hear you. Seven lakhs. Is that a final figure? About six lakhs. How many clear the prelims and then how many are actually qualified for mains? It's about 10. Fine. How many make it to the final list? No. Give me a precise figure. Okay, let's say 1000. How many actually make it to the IELTS? 700. No chance. It's about 125 to 150 depending upon the year. So, what was the original figure? 6 lakhs. From 6 lakhs to 125, what is the ratio? How many of your students of mathematics? See the odds. The odds are frightening. But that doesn't mean that you are not going to make it. You could be one who will beat the odds, provided you make a very steadfast resolution within your heart. Again, I am repeating that point. It's not something that is going to come out of your head. Mere wish means nothing. Wish has to be converted into desire. The desire has to start burning you. Deep within it has to start burning you so much that if I can't make it, doesn't make sense. The job itself needs me more than I need the job. You know, that kind of an attitude, that kind of, what do I call, fire within the belly. And if you don't have that, then it will remain a wish, general wish. Actually, it becomes a little more fashionable. It's a fashion to tell people that I'm preparing for civil service. It's fashion. But how many of them are actually passing the prelims? 
And how many of them are clearing the mains? Even if you are. How many of them are clearing the personal records and getting into the final list? Smaller number. And the ones who are actually making it the final list are minimal. Shortly. So, what is that one quality that a person must possess to be in the last 125? Can you just tell me any one person? What is that one quality that a person must possess in order to be in the final list of 125? I am not talking about 1000. I am talking about 120. Say it in Telugu. I mean, I am comfortable just about it. Emma? Say, say it loudly. You want to become an ice officer? Stand up and then say it. Have the courage to say it. Now, no voice. Emma? Raise the hand first. Yes. Now say it. Say it again. Consistency. Consistency is in terms of effort. That is fine. I mean, year one, year two, year three, you have to be. You are talking about the process. But I am asking you about the attitude. What kind of cultural trait you must possess in order to achieve whatever you want to achieve.
they will just keep quiet in the class, the way you are keeping quiet. Suppose it's the same thing if I'm holding a conversation with the boys and girls coming from Punjab or Delhi or Chandigarh, the whole room would be boisterous. Boisterous in the sense that they will be making so much of noise. Everybody wants to speak, everybody wants to say something, everyone has a point of view. But when it comes to South India in general and Andhra Pradesh in particular, they are not even talking about the Hyderabad boys and girls. The Hyderabad people are a little better relative to people coming from this side. And the reason is, by nature or by training or by the way we have been brought up, I believe that society keeps on telling us that you know, Never talk more than necessary, number one. At home, your parents would have told you any number of times. Adhika prasanga chayyadu. Have you heard? Dekko matrada. Kadwala mo dekko matrada. No, all of these informal suggestions, they keep working in the back of your mind. Kadwala mo dekko matrada. You know, if you don't matrada, chala mo dekko matrada, vinara le dekko. Vinara. So why? When people are saying before elders, there is a certain element of decorum that you have to maintain as a child, which is fair. But something similar is not taking place so much in the North. So that difference is making all the difference to our boys and girls coming from the South when it comes to personality. This I have noticed personally. And it takes long time, even for the boys who have been selected. Boys and girls are selected from South India. They come during the foundation course, they are withdrawn, they are very shy, they always try to be backbenchers, they don't want to be in the front, they don't speak at all. But by phase one, things change a little bit. But by phase two, things change a little bit. Once they go back to the districts, they are fantastic officers. I have seen South Indians working in the other camps, not Andhra Pradesh or South India like Northeast or Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, they all have fantastic reputations. I can mention name after name how our boys and girls are doing very well in the field, but they don't do very well in the personality. So therefore what happens is they come up to a point. They are good in the prelims, they are good in the written examination, but when it comes to the interview or the personality, there is something which is holding them holding them back from expressing themselves powerfully. And powerful articulation is one of the key ingredients for your success in the personality test. Please remember that. And if you cannot articulate yourself powerfully, you come across as a shy, somewhat introverted, somewhat reticent, withdrawn kind of a person. And that is where you lose anything up to 5 to 10 percent of marks. And that 5 to 10 percent of marks makes a critical difference to your service. Either you are an IS officer or an IPS officer or any other kind of officer is going to be determined by that 5 to 10 percent. Believe me when I say this. So all of you will have to invest a lot of time in the communication skills from now on. If you want to be in the civil services and if you say I don't want to speak but I want to be a powerful civil servant, that's not going to be possible because the job, the job, whichever job you are going to do, you are dealing with people and when you are dealing with people, you have to communicate your thoughts sufficiently well, powerfully and if you are not articulate enough, then your thoughts don't go across to the persons who are sitting in before you and that's not good for an officer, that's not an officer like quality. So I suggest that you start parallel, in addition to preparing for your prelims, mains, etc., also start preparing for your communication skills. From now onwards, because you can't develop it at a very, very short notice. You can't say that, look, after I pass the main examination, then I will prepare for improving my communication skills. That doesn't work like that. Because these are all things that are ingrained. These are all the things that will work with you over a period of time. I want you to understand. Am I clear? Are you able to follow what I am saying? Okay, good. So I think this is all I wanted to say.